Welcome back to the second part of the tutorial on common rafter roof framing. We'll begin by setting up the framing square, or the rafter square. This is called the heel of the framing square, and this is the body of the framing square. On the body, we'll set our stair gauge to 12, and on the tongue, we'll set the stair gauge to 9 inches. All right, now we want to sight down the end of the rafter stock and look for the crown. Crown is the hump, and you always want the crown to face upwards. This is the framing reference plane, indicated by the dotted line. You want to move your framing square to the end of the board, just beyond where the board starts to check. First line we're going to draw is the ridge line. This will go to the center of the ridge beam. You'll note the red dot. This is our framing point. Note that it falls at the juncture between your ridge line and your framing reference plane. All right, you want to grab your framing square and move it along the top of the rafter, a mathematical rafter distance of 15 feet. Take your lumber pencil and draw a line along the tongue of your rafter square. And this will be your building line. Now we're going to move the rafter square down the distance of the mathematical overhang length, which we said was 1 foot 8 inches. Draw a line along the tongue of the rafter square. This is your fascia line. Now we want to take our framing square, flip it upside down, and butt it up to the bottom of the board. Next we want to measure down along the building line to establish our height above plate line. For this project, the height above plate line will be 7 inches. Now once you set up your height above plate line for the project, it can remain consistent throughout the entire project. Make your mark at 7 inches and move your framing square over to that point. Make your mark along the body of the framing square. This is known as your seat cut. Sometimes it's referred to as your bird's mouth cut. So your seat cut sits on top of your plate line, drawn up tight to your building line. Measuring down along your fascia line, we're going to establish the fascia height, which I believe we said was 6 inches. Put a mark. And now move your framing square over to that mark. Draw your line, and this is known as your plancher cut, or your plancher line. This establishes your fascia height. Let's go back to the ridge line. We want to make a parallel measurement. You can use your framing square. Your measurement wants to be perpendicular, or 90 degrees, from your ridge line. And that'll be 3 quarters of an inch, which is half the thickness of your ridge beam. You draw a line that's parallel to your ridge line. And this is known as your ridge setback line. All right, we've got the layout completed now, so you want to get out your circular saw and set your angle blade to 90 degrees. 
Now we'll start our cuts. The first cut will start at the ridge setback line. You just zip off the end of the rafter. Next cut we're going to make will be the bird's mouth cut. And you'll first cut along your building line. And then your seat cut line. Let's make our tail cut now. Make your cut along the fascia line. And finally, along the plancher cut. All right, rafter is all cut and just about ready to set in place. We're going to need to establish our ridge beam height of a plate line. This is our plate line. And our total run is 12 feet. Now if we didn't know our total rise, we could use a simple formula to determine that. This is based on the unit rise. And it's simply rise over run. The rise is 9 inches. The run is 12 inches. Divide 9 by 12, and you come up with an answer of 0.75. Here's the rise. Here's the run. So again, 9 divided by 12 is 0.75. You multiply that by the total run of 12 feet, and you come up with the total rise of 9 feet. Now to find the height of the beam, you take the total rise, which we said was 9 feet. You add to that the height of a plate line, which is 7 inches. And then you subtract the loss at the top. The loss at the top is 1 half of an inch. Let me show you how to make that calculation. You take the rise times half the ridge thickness, divide by the run. So the rise is 9 feet times half the ridge thickness, which would be 0.75, or 3 quarters of an inch. Divide that by 12, which is the run, and you come up with the answer of 0.56, or 1 half of an inch. After you put all your calculations together, you come up with the result of 9 feet, 6 and 1 half of an inch. And remember, that's from the plate line to the top of the ridge beam. Here's a 3D view, and we're going to take a look at the ridge beam where it has a notch to accommodate the barge rafter. So we have to cut a notch in the ridge beam. And we said the overhang was 1 feet 4 inches. We're showing a depth of 7 inches for that notch that we're cutting in the ridge beam to accommodate the barge rafter. And I'll show you how you come up with that figure. So one way to get that measurement is just to cut it in the field and measure it. The other way, if you want to look at the math behind this, you do it this way. You enter the rise, which is 9, and divide by 12. You hit inverse and then tangent on your calculator. That gives you the angle of 36.87. On your calculator, enter the rafter width divided by 36.87. Hit your cosine function, and the answer is 6.87, which you can round off to 7 inches. All right, looking at the plan view now, and a quick look at the section. You can see the ridge beam. There's the height, there's the overhang, and it runs the entire width of the building. Take a look at the other cross section, and in red you can see the framing point. There's the height of the ridge, and here's a 3D view to the plan view now and start setting some of these rafters in place. We'll place the first common rafter at the framing point. Remember we've already made the ridge setback calculation. So you just butt it up tight to the ridge beam and nail it in place. Snug the other end up to the plate line and we're good to go. 
taking a look at a section view, you can see how it falls in relation to the framing point. Now I'm going to select these two, which I've set in place, and I'm going to do a copy array. We said the rafters were two foot on center. We said the building was 38 feet. So if you do your math, divide by two feet on center, we'll find that we need 19 of these rafters, including the end rafter. Accounting for both sides of the ridge beam, that'll give you 38 rafters in total. Now we should put the barge rafters in. I need to mirror that to the other side of the ridge beam. I'll select both of those and then copy them to the other end of the building. Finally, we'll put the lookouts in place. These are two by fours. And you can see they go from the barge rafter, notched through the verge rafter, nailed onto the common rafter for support. A quick copy, and I'll just cut to the chase so you can see the 3D view. Once again, the lookouts are notched into the verge rafter. And you can see what it looks like where they join the ridge beam. And there's the completed view of the gable roof project. I hope you've enjoyed our tutorial or gotten something out of it, and I invite you to visit our website, www.velocirafter.com. We've got hip rafters, valley rafters, gazebos, California framing, and lots of illustrations for you to take a look.